All right, everyone, so for our third day of class, I've got a couple more documents for you. Uh, lecture, and then at the end of the day, we'll have a little bit of time. If you'd like to um, volunteer your website, I'll put it up on the board. We'll talk about it, give uh, some quick impressions on it, positive and negative, and some you know, quick analysis of it. That'll be at the end of the day, but we've got a few things before that. So if you... Um, you should have your computer on and if you go into the network folder I've got some documents for you so go up to the computer window top left corner under computer you want to go to network location under network location classroom data open that and then you will see if you scroll down campus SEO Monday that's our class and I've got uh, two documents for you. One is the client marketing strategy and one is the campus SEO number three backlinks. So what we want here is to copy both of those to your desktop or your flash drive. And what you want to do with here you go. And what you want to do with that is when you copy them over, remember to put them on your flash drive or desktop. The, the printer's off at the moment. Um, so you can print a little bit later, but these are the two documents that I got for today. Um, previously we looked at sheet one and two, today we'll look at three. And previously we also looked at client company profile, and what we want to do now is client marketing strategy. So we'll look at that word document first, client marketing strategy. Go ahead and copy that over to your desktop or flash drive if you have any trouble opening it, uh, let me know. And then also a quick reminder as we open that up, please take a moment to mute your devices if you haven't done so yet. Uh, laptops, uh, tablets, smartphones, please mute your devices. And as always, uh, food and beverages off to the side over here, please. So let's take a look at this marketing strategy. This is a version of what my company does when we get hired. Previously, we talked about the, the company profile. This is the marketing strategy. And we want to know as much as possible about the company in order to do a good job for them. And so here is part of the discovery phase of getting hired and getting to know the client so that we can properly optimize for them and do a good job. So it's got various questions to think about. We'll look at each of them and then I'll write some notes and give you these notes at the end of the day. And so this is not any sort of homework. This is optional for you to do. If you do it, I can take a look at it if you'd like. But this is not anything you turn in. Your marketing strategy, you fill in those fields at the top, and then there's several questions here to think about. The big one, which sometimes is a hard one to answer, because you might think it's obvious, but as you think about it, it actually might be more complex. So the first question is, what do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want to, and want uh, people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence, which would be your website or social media or whatever it is you're trying to do online. My example here, Vic.co, wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect people within, we want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So that sort of um, answer there, any answer works to some degree, but that sort of answer there is more dense. That answer says we want to engage in social media, work with our current customers, get new customers, use Instagram, etc. I could have easily said the purpose of my company online is to get hired to make websites. And that's fine. That's an answer. That's something that you could strive toward. It is actionable. This one here with a little bit more detail 
is more dense and therefore has more for you to work toward because the more specific you are, the better you can reach that goal. I have a nonprofit organization and I want to get donations to my nonprofit organization. That's why I've got a website. That's why I've got Facebook. That's why I use Twitter. I want to get more donations. I want to get more traffic to my website. Traffic leads to those donations. So you have to think about what are you trying to accomplish online? Don't just get online. Don't build an online presence just because you think you have to, because everyone else is doing it, because your competitors are doing it. Why? are you? Why is your business getting online? Why is your business getting a website or a Twitter or a shopping cart and such? The next question would be, who is your target audience? It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in your product or your cause or your group, but it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product. What are their age, ranges, gender, economic group, musical style? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we are creating a persona of a potential client. The people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s, who are successful, own their own company, need a website, and know the value of web design. So the big companies that do well have a whole marketing team one people, ten people, a hundred people, who knows they've got people that are thinking about all of this stuff, every angle of how to get them more sales, more clients, more donations, whatever marketing. So because we know as we've talked previously SEO goes hand in hand with SEM marketing it's important to think about these things. Don't just get on Twitter and start to tweet stuff. Don't just get on Facebook and start to post. Don't just use Instagram and post things that you, that you like. You have to think about who are these things for. When you tweet something, when you post something, when you put something on Instagram, etc., who are you trying to reach? Who would care about that? And how will it help you reach that goal of getting those donations, selling that product, getting building awareness? And so here, this is a big concept. You can get a degree in, in marketing, of course, and part of that is a huge endeavor of figuring out personas. Literally, the big companies have binders full of fake people that they've invented. This is John Smith, lives in San Diego, graduated from this place, has this income, likes this and that. A fake person that is invented so that whatever you do online is targeted to that fake person. But that fake person has, um, has antecedents in the real world, in that that person that I made up, yes, there are plenty of people that live in San Diego that have this education, that have this um, uh, income and such that I can strive toward, that I can market to. So this is to get you away from thinking that everyone will love your product. Anyone can buy it. Uh, everyone will follow me. Everyone can like my content on Facebook. No, you really need to specify. You need to target. If you take the social media class, we talk about that. Um, who's your audience? Who would care about your content? And, those, and the more of those people that you find that care about your content, the more that could lead to actual results. Not just impressions, which is that someone saw your stuff online, but conversions, that someone bought a pro product, subscribed to your newsletter, read your blog post, etc. The example right here, take a moment to dissect what that says, because I'm giving this example very deliberately. Um, the people who want to hire my company are trendy, but know what they want, so they know that they want a style of web design that is trendy, that is modern, that is now, that doesn't look like an old kind of website, that doesn't use the old methods of, you know, um, the old web designs. You remember websites used to be very shiny and full of a lot of highlights and drop shadows and chrome and all of that. And then now websites, the, the more modern ones, are a little more stylized, simplified, flatter. So here I'm just saying, I'm looking for to be hired by 
people that know what they want in, in their web design, not people that are, you know, wishy-washy about setting up their style online. I'm targeting this particular age group also in their 30s. Of course we can make websites for people in their 20s, 40s, 60s, 90s, etc. But we want to target this audience. Once we have a group to target to, our endeavors will be more successful. Specifically, even deeper, 30-year-olds that own their own company. So young entrepreneurs that have a company that are trying to make it big, trying to be the next Facebook, whatever, and we are going to go for them, those that really know what they want in design. And also here I say the value of web design, figuratively and literally. Figuratively in that they understand a good website can really find your audience and sell your product and such. But literally in that a good website is not a $250 thing. It is not a $1,000 thing. It's, you know, $5,000, $3,000, $10,000, depending on the complexity of what they need for their site. So they're basically, that's a nice way of saying we're not dealing with the cheapskates. Because you're going to see ads about build a website for $250. You're going to hear uh, people selling themselves as a complete package for $300. And just like anything, you get what you pay for. If you buy that, you know, $75 suit for your interview instead of the $200 suit, you know, you get what you pay for. One might fit better, uh, feel better, and such. So you, you do pay for quality. And I'm saying that here. We are going to target people that are in this age range and know that you have to spend a good amount of money for a good website, a good functional, powerful website. And yes, this excludes a lot of people, but you have to decide. Are you trying to reach everyone, which basically you reach no one? Or are you trying to specialize and yes, cut out a bunch of people that could possibly be an audience for you, but could have pros and cons? We might be interviewed by a potential client that fits all of these bills, all of these check marks, except for the one about the value. They keep nickel and diming and saying, well, you sound really good and talented, but instead of $100 an hour, you know our budget right now is only $56 an hour. Can you do that? Well, sure. But if we see that at early on in this stage, they're already sort of pushing back about some of these things. They're going to continue to do so every step of the way. Why would we spend on this? What's the necess necessity about that? I heard that you can do it like this. So that client then, just because they've satisfied all of these requirements that we're looking for, except for one, doesn't mean it could be what we want. So we want to specify a target audience and go for it. The question then is, do you have an aspirational competition? It's good to have role models both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that, or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List the company, person, brand, etc. that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? Vic Co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well-known in the field of web design, and their style is unique and modern. So this was uh, related to one of the first activities we did, remember, the, the um, uh, competitor analysis. We went on Bing, we went on Google, we searched keywords, we found the competition, we went to their websites, we looked at what we liked, but we didn't. We were doing competitor analysis. And so here, um, we have competition, we want to see who's good, and we want to see what they're doing well, and what we can do like them or better and so it's good to have you know competition aspirational competition some one or some company that you're aspiring to and it doesn't have to be literally within your exact niche uh, real-world example we have this client who is a Mexican food restaurant they serve traditional Mexican food uh, slow roasted lamb barbecue uh, barbacoa de borrego so it's a traditional Mexican meal, 
And when we were hired uh, to do this rebranding and such, and we asked this question to the owner, who's your aspirational competition, not directly, but who are you trying to be like? He answered, well, I want to be like Phil's Barbecue. Now, how many of you have heard of Phil's Barbecue? Phil's Barbecue, if you haven't, is a big, famous name in the world of, of San Diego barbecue, traditional American-style barbecue. And you would think, well, if this is a Mexican food restaurant, lamb barbecue, that's so different than Phil's Barbecue, you know, that's beef, uh, it's got the sauces and you know traditional American barbecue so how does that relate well you have to think about every aspect of Phil's barbecue they have a they have a you know a 40 minute wait on the front door there's a sign like Disneyland that says you know waiting here uh, standing here you've got a 40 minute wait and they've got that pretty much every day of the week so this client wants to be like that wants to be known as the go-to place for good Mexican food wants to be known uh, as a place that uh, you know, has a line out the door, um, wants to be synonymous with their particular, uh, you know, their particular niche. And at the moment, the client does have a big, <clears throat> a big um, line out the door on the weekends, but he wants to expand for that to be Monday through, you know, Monday through Sunday. So seeing what Phil's Barbecue does, that's his goal. What are they doing? What are they doing well? What can we do better? So that's some competition to aspire to, to get inspiration from, and to see how you can do it better. And I really recommend that, especially when you're thinking about social media. I've got to tweet again. I've got to do a blog post again. I've got to post on Instagram again. I'm out of ideas. Look at the competition and look at what they're posting and think about how you can do a variation of it. So it's okay to look at the competition because everyone else does it. If you don't do it, then you're at the disadvantage. Next is to think about a vision statement. A mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a, brand, as a company or brand. You may set a time horizon, five years for example. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. So on the previous handout, it was the mission statement. What are you doing now? What's your reason for being a company now? Mission statement is for you to set future goals, which you can then incorporate some time into the statement. And it can be as long as you want, of course. But here we're saying that our ultimate goal is to focus on San Diego restaurants, elegant San Diego restaurants. Yes, we could make websites for any mom and pop taco shop out there, but that's not our that's not our uh, target audience that we're talking about up here. So we want to get hired. This fictional company wants to get hired to do websites for San Diego restaurants, elegant restaurants. You know, by thirty something year olds that know the value of all of this. And <clears throat> that's what we're going to be known for. Vic.co is the company where uh, it's the go-to company if I'm a young entrepreneur, if I'm a young chef that just opened my own restaurant. That's the vision. And all of this stuff that we're creating, various aspects go, upon, go, go on the website and go into your social media profiles and everything that you do online. So this is to create this foundation of what you'll be doing in, in future endeavors. Unique selling proposition. What do you provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Answer the question of why. That is why would a client hire you? Vic.co is based in San Diego and many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to a San Diego audience, to San Diego companies. So what's unique? OK, we say, we're a web design company in San Diego. Great, you and a thousand others. OK, well, we target uh, only restaurants, you and 500 others. OK, well, we uh, ourselves have experience in, in small businesses, and some of us have graduated from local colleges and have experience in culinary, let's say. 
So now that field is even narrower now. Now you're standing out more than every other web designer, every other San Diego web designer, every other whatever. You're standing out. What's unique about you? And that goes back to answering the question of why. Why would they hire you? So I think it's best to illustrate this in a, in a, in a drawing here. I'm going to draw something here. I'm going to put this graphic in the web design folder a little later, but uh, let me draw it here. So these are our three circles. Three concentric circles, one inside the other. These are the golden circles. And on the outside circle, we have we have the um, the question of what? On the next inner circle, we have the question of how? And on the innermost circle, we have the question of why. This is a concept that uh, comes from the from the author Simon Sinek, applying to concepts of leadership, but also to business in that these three questions here can be asked about anything, but it's harder to answer the why. So let's take it in terms of a web design company. The what here, what do you do? Well, we're a web design company, you and everyone else. Okay, how are you a web design company, or how are you going to do your job as a web design company? We're going to use WordPress, and we're going to use this technology and that technology to get it done. Okay, great. You and a lot of other people also. Less than the what, perhaps, but still a lot of people. And then, okay, why are you a web designer? Why, are you, why do you make websites? Why does your company make web, websites? That's the hard one to answer. Why? Well, we, uh, everyone in our company really loves technology, and we grew up with it, and we are artistic also, and we want to make a great product that we believe in. This, the pool of possible companies is narrowing. Some are some will answer the why simply as to make money, to get famous, to buy a boat, whatever. But as this gets smaller and more detailed, this why will also resonate with the potential client. If we're talking about how we grew up here in San Diego, we were educated here, we like web design, we we're artistic, we believe in this and that cause, and as we, you know, further define our company about why we do this which is very hard to answer, then that could further connect you with actual companies that also believe in this and believe in that and follow this and follow that. And therefore that why, if that is answered and that why lines up with the potential, custo potential customer, then they can become an actual customer. The more the why actually resonates. That's why it's the smallest one in the circle. That's why it's the hardest one to, to, get, to get to, answering why. This uh, author here, he's got a, a few uh, free speeches online for you to get more info about it. If you look up uh, Simon Sinek, Ted, TED Talks, these are a series of lectures um, a series of lectures. Here's a free 18 minute long lecture on this concept. So the guy's name is Simon Sinek. If you do a quick search for Simon Sinek TED, TED Talks, if you haven't heard of them, these are these lectures on a variety of fascinating topics from fascinating people. And so he would give his own theory better justice than me. But how it relates to us 
again, I am a realtor. I simply think, well, I need a website. I want to sell more houses. I want a website. I hear that that's the best way to do it. Get online. You know, it's not anymore as powerful to network with people. I gotta get online. Everyone's telling me I gotta get online. Okay, that's one little piece of the puzzle. You've got to answer the what, the how, and the why about selling, about being a realtor in the 21st century. So if you break it down with these three questions, what? Well, I'm a realtor. I want to sell houses. How? I have inf I have access and information to, you know, properties that aren't even in the full market yet. Why? Well, I believe in, uh, you know, the family unit, and I want to help a young couples get their first house so that they can make a future for themselves in San Diego, because I grew up here and I know the neighborhoods. And um, I believe in the, you know, I believe in Southern California, and I live here myself, and I own two properties. So I'm trying to get out the why of it all. Why am I a realtor? Why am I trying to sell houses? Obviously, the, the cynical answer is to make money off of it. It's a lucrative thing. But answering this why, honestly, then gets you better to, closer to actually getting that client, actually selling those houses. How many of you before this class have heard of, 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 this, of this speaker, Simon Sinek? I do recommend you uh, check out that free video, and he's got a couple of books, of course, and, and all of that. But is a big concept and again maybe you signed up for this class and you thought okay I'm gonna learn about keywords and what to do in WordPress and such but you should see it's not just that I, I am giving you real advice about what we do for real clients it's not just about let's think about keywords add them to the site and we're done it's so much bigger than that SEO SEM content marketing all of these modern topics and this might seem so far out of field but if you do think about it this is why there are companies that are successful think about it again in terms of I'm not sure if I mentioned it previously, but love them or hate them, Apple is a, is a real pro about the why of it all. Um, if you look at their commercials, you know, traditionally, I just saw one the other day, uh, and it's and they're, they're, they're on point almost all the time, but sometimes they miss. I think they really missed with their Apple Watch. I think they really missed on, like, why would you want the Apple Watch? Um, but uh, I just saw one for their, uh, I forget what they, what they call it, like moving images or live images or something like that. This commercial where it was uh, people taking photos. Well, every, every cell phone takes photos. And they showed, well, our version is you take a photo and it also captured a moment. It's not just a single photo. You took that photo, you tap and hold it a moment, and it plays a little animation of what had happened at that moment. Basically, technologically, it saved a mini movie in addition to your photo. Now, honestly, Apple did not invent that. Uh, Microsoft invented that with their, with their Lumia phones, actually, years before that. But Microsoft sometimes doesn't have the best marketing. Apple has better marketing, oftentimes. So basically, now we all believe, yeah, Apple invented this. This is very cool, moving images built into my phone. I love it. This will be great for when I take photos of my family, and I'll never miss a moment. That's what Apple's trying to do. Not the technology, not that it basically creates a mini-movie. It's that it creates a moment. Listen to the terminology, too. Again, I'm forgetting the exact name, but I think they call it living moments, something like that. And the why. Because my family is very important to me, and I want to capture every moment of it. The why. And several companies are very adept at this. And many, many more are not. Because they're only thinking about the what. We are another dog walking company. We are another restaurant you and everyone else. But then the how and the why is harder to answer, especially the why. So that's this, uh, that's this handout here. There is, again, heady questions to think about. And um, if you've never thought of any of these topics, it's a good idea to start to think about them because modern SEO is not just about keywords and such. It is about marketing. So any questions on this document? What are these concepts? <coughs> I'm going to put this drawing into the network folder, and you can have a copy of that if you'd like.
Okay, so I have a third handout, but we're not going to look at it just yet. <coughs> this third handout, item three, let me just confirm. I think we'll look at it a little bit. Yeah, we'll take a look at it a little bit in the future, because what I want to do instead is um, shift gears uh, to be a little more tangible. I was talking about pretty intangible things here with this handout. I want to talk about things in tan uh, tangible that we can do. So uh, let me restart the recorder for a new topic, and then we'll look at this new idea.